In this video, I'm going to briefly discuss some of the properties of unit hydrographs that are going to help us to apply unit hydrographs to estimate stream flow hydrographs. So we're going to talk about two principles of unit hydrographs that are important to know. The first one is going to be linearity, and the second one is going to be superposition. So both of these should sound familiar terms. You've used these in other math and engineering co courses in the past, but now we're going to apply them to a unit hydrograph. So we know that a unit hydrograph is designed for a hyetograph where one inch of rain falls in some duration. Okay, so here's our unit hydrograph for one inch of rain. And from that, we can estimate the hydrograph Okay, and so for that one inch of rain that falls for some duration, we de can determine the unit hydrograph where this is flow over time at some point in the river. Okay, so what happens if instead of one inch of rain, we have two inches of rain in that same duration? Well, the principle of linearity allows us to just double the amount of flow for each point in the hydrograph. Okay, so this would be two times QP. Here, where QP is the max flow rate for the unit hydrograph when you had just one inches of rain. So if you have three inches of rain in that same duration, now it's really important that the duration is, remains the same here, then you can triple it and so on. So now let's look at what happens with superposition. So in this case, we're gonna have one inch of rain occurring for my duration, and that has the corresponding flow hydrograph, okay? And then after that unit of rain, we have another unit of rain for the same duration. So what does that lead to for the total hydrograph? Well, I've just moved my inch of rain or centimeter of rain over by one duration in time. And so I'm going to do the same for my hydrograph. So it's going to look something like this. It's going to have the same peak flow as the previous one. So my overall hydrograph here is going to be the sum of both of them together. Okay, so it's going to look something like this. This is my Q peak. It takes into account that first, let's say, two-hour storm and the second two-hour storm, both with a intensity or total rainfall excess of one inch or one centimeter. Okay, so let's look at applying unit hydrograph to an actual storm. So I'm going to draw an approximation of a hyetograph, so rainfall excess over time. All right, so here's an example on the left-hand side up here. So here is an example of rainfall excess for some given duration. So we're going to call this the duration, okay? And so in that first duration, we have a rainfall excess of P1. In the second duration storm, we have a rainfall excess of P2 and the rain of rainfall excess of P3. On the left-hand side, this is my unit hydrograph. So this unit hydrograph represents if one unit of rainfall falls for the same duration, we have these ordinates. I can estimate U1, U2, U3, and U4, okay? So I'm gonna create a little table here and apply the unit hydrograph. So here's my unit hydrograph, and let's go about seeing how we apply this to my storm. So in the next column I'm gonna create is gonna be P1 times my unit hydrograph, okay? So that first storm, we're gonna first apply the linearity. So it's instead of one unit of rainfall excess, I have P1. So at time zero, I'm going to have a P1 times unit hydrograph of zero. At time one, it's gonna be P1 times U1. And this continues for all of the times of, for the unit hydrograph. P1 times U4, and then zero, okay? So that one's fairly easy, but that's not the end of the storm. 
So I'm going to add another column here that is P2 times the unit hydrograph. However, here's what's tricky. That storm doesn't start until one full duration time after the first storm starts. So I have to lag the start of applying the unit hydrograph. So actually at time zero, I put a zero, but that's because of the lag. And at time one, I put a zero, and that's when I'm starting my storm here. So then I have P2 times U1 at time two, and then P2 times U2, P2 times U3, P2 times U4, and then I need another zero. Okay, and I'm gonna do this one more time for P3. And I'm going to pause here and write this all out and come back. All right, so here is my the third piece of the storm applied to the unit hydrograph. So these two are my lag. This third zero is when the storm starts, and then I apply my four points on my unit hydrograph. Okay, last step here is to apply superposition and add these all together for each corresponding time. Okay, so here is the total storm hydrograph. Let me do that very straight. You can see I have applied both linearity, and I do that by multiplying the ordinates of the unit hydrograph by the total rainfall excess represented by P1, P2, and P3. And then I've applied superposition to add all three parts of the storm coming through, okay? I'm gonna do a real, not a real example, but an example using actual numbers in another video, so look for that.